<laughs> I don't know if that's quite the right way to spin it, Rob, if I'm honest with you. We don't know what to expect when we put our instruments in a hold. Um, <laughs> will they still come out the right shape? I don't know. Don't tell me. I don't want to have to sign an NDA. G'day, it's Nigel here. Welcome back to the Sax School Online Podcast. So, when you first start learning saxophone, or maybe if you're thinking of adding another sax to your collection, is buying a brand new instrument the only option that you should consider? Or is perhaps hiring a better way to go? Or maybe even buying a used sax? So to help me with this conversation today, I'm joined by Rob Driver. He's from Music Corner. They're one of the big leading saxophone hire companies here in the UK. And hopefully we can get some answers to this really important question. Hey Rob, how you doing? Hi Nigel, yeah, I'm good, thank you. Thank you for having me on. Oh look, it's great to have you here. Uh, I, I was actually just thinking before we started filming today that, you know, I've spent the last week making uh, a video about the brand new $10,000 Selma saxophones. And wow. I mean, they're beautiful, right? But it struck me that times are tough for lots of folks at the moment. And it's such a shame if like the price of a new saxophone is a barrier to stop people actually starting to learn saxophone. So are you seeing more and more that hiring is a way that people are getting around this? I think hire offers the flexibility, of course. Um, it obviously brings down that price. It, you know, it helps people get involved. Um, and also it's that a lot of people also don't know whether they're going to have the time. They don't, it, there's a lot of factors, I think, in learning a saxophone that some people don't often think about until they start. Well, it's a new it's a new activity, isn't it? So you don't know how you're going to react to it. I mean, everyone feels the same. Even like when I start learning something new, maybe even not a music thing, but something else, you don't really know if you're going to click with it. Is it going to be the thing that you're going to stick with? And it's, it can be a massive investment uh, getting started with uh, a, an instrument. Case in point are those very expensive Selmas, which are lovely, by the way. And if you're curious, keep an eye out for the YouTube video because uh, I've, I've got some interesting thoughts on it. Um, so, you know, with Sax School, we're helping thousands of adult learners. We've got thousands of adults learning with us all around the world. I'm curious, though, for your business, are you seeing a lot of adult customers who are hiring saxophones or is it, is it a more children or is it parents of children? What, what's the sort of breakdown? Well, what we actually find is a lot of our customers are adults. Um, there is a fantastic foundation for schools. Um, where children are obviously involved there, but when it gets to get, when you leave school, you're when you come back into music, you've often found that no, they can't hire you because you're not in the education system anymore. Um, so that's where we can come along. Uh, we can obviously help provide that affordable outlay um, to getting involved and playing an instrument. Our, our main aim of Music Corner has always been to. Uh, break down financial barriers, take music to the masses, and often make playing an instrument as easy as going out, buying a football, and going to the park and playing football. That's that's as easy as we want to make it. Yeah, I love that. And you know what? That's so aligned with what we're doing at Sax School because that's always been my mission too, right from the start, is to make education, saxophone education, accessible to everybody. Um, so it's not like you need to, you know, go to a university or it's going to be really complicated to get started it should be easy to get started it should be accessible so yeah i, I love that rob that you're thinking about it from the instrument side of things too I, I imagine though a lot of people have got concerns if they've never hired a saxophone before perhaps they've had a dodgy hire experience with some other tool or something so i mean i'm guessing people worry about what what sort of saxophone they're going to end up with are, am I, are they going to get like a beaten up old sax that's been hired to 50 million people before or, or do they get a new saxophone talk us through the whole process how does it work when someone hires a saxophone well obviously our business is higher um and we take great pride in the instrument so whenever an instrument does say it gets past its best um we don't want that to go out we want every instrument to be proudly owned we want people to talk about the instrument that they've hired from us and to go out join a local community band get some lessons we want people to talk about it so actually what you'll find is when you're hiring an instrument they are taken great care of every time an instrument comes back to us it is completely serviced so it's stripped down 
pads, corks, and parts are replaced. That's hard to say, um, isn't it? Pads, corks, and parts. I don't think I is. can say that three times really quickly. <laughs> <laughs> you should try, you should try to get to an expert and saying it every single sort of 10, 15 minutes. Uh, it gets quite tricky. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah, what you will find with hire insurance is they are well catered for, well looked after. And most hire companies, there are others out there as well as us, um, but they would also look after the insurance. So you are in safe hands. And you, the best thing to do is, is get a company, have a chat with the person at the end of the phone and really get to know that company before you get with them. Yeah, I guess that support is really, really important. I think something that I see from the students that come and join us is a lot of people don't understand that a, a well-built saxophone, a good quality saxophone, if it's well-maintained, will last a lifetime. I mean, you know, they can be fixed and it's not, they look, a lot of people look at a saxophone and think, oh my goodness, it looks so complicated. There's so many moving parts on there. But in a lot of ways, they're, they're actually quite simple and they are easy to maintain. And there's actually quite a lot of repairers around. So I, I think it's important for people to understand that it's okay to have um, a quality saxophone as long as it's well-maintained, even if it's not brand new. And that's certainly something that, that uh, we encourage our members to consider as well, particularly because from a price point of view, it can be a lot more affordable if you're looking to buy one. So yeah, absolutely. That's great. So what, can you give us an idea of what sort of brands or models that it is typically the saxophone that you would hire out? Yeah. So we, we start our hire at £15 per month for saxophones. £15 a month. That's so affordable, isn't it? Yeah, we try and keep it affordable uh, to suit most budgets. Um, what we our ultimate goal, like I said before, is to break down financial barriers, and we want everyone taking part. So, at fifteen pounds a month, what, what brand of saxophone could I expect to get then? So you're looking at probably an Elkhart or an Arlen. Um So we do use very good, well-known brands already. Uh, we're not trying to reinvent the world by bringing a new brand to market. What we're trying to do is actually make those ones that are already there, already tried and tested, just affordable. Yeah. Well, I mean, those are good, solid student saxophones. And a lot of people would look at buying something like that uh, as their first saxophone. Actually, increasingly these days, we are seeing uh, students who are looking for that intermediate or beginner saxophone. But even like the, the big, well-known brands their intermediate beginner saxophones have become quite expensive now, right? So now there's another another layer underneath there of um, more affordable, obviously Chinese saxophones, a bit of a more of a variety of quality in there. There are some good ones, I'll say, but um, yeah, all the prices just seem to have shifted up. Like like I was saying with these these pro saxophones. So on that topic, then, like um, for pro saxophones, if someone's thinking. Well, you know what, I, I do want to hire, but I'd like to get a pro saxophone. I mean, is that something that people ask you about? Or is that something you you uh, help people out with? We do help people out. It, uh, we, we often refer to that as personal shopping um, because for us, as our, we, we, we mainly focus on students, getting students started. Obviously, if you want to then take it to the next level and you still want to use us as a, as a hire company, um, what we can do is take up to 12 months of hire off the price that you've already paid in higher fees for the student one, and we can take it off the next level up instrument. Um, but obviously that again, we go out, we cherry pick the best on the market, we bring it in. Um, when it does come to picking intermediate, intermediate and pro instruments, I'd always recommend visiting the shop. Um, and the reason for that is because now you know what you want. So when you're a student, it's just about getting started at the right price. Once you get to that intermediate pro level, you know what you're looking for. You know what sound, whether it's a jazz, whether it's a big band. And those certain brands, you want to go in and test three or four out and try them out. So that's what I always recommend is once you get past the student stage, go and go to a, go visit a local shop and try a couple out. Yeah, no, I completely agree. I mean, we're always sending people down to Saks.co in London, uh, I mean, there's a bunch of dorks that are great too. There's a few retailers here in the UK. And obviously, for our, we've got lots of students in America. And there's some brilliant shops over there too, depending on where you are. But yeah, there's nothing that beats going and actually picking up the saxophones and having a play. Or maybe getting somebody in the shop to play them for you so you can have a listen to how they sound. And 
but it's feeling them, right? It's feeling them, holding you in your hands. Um, however, I do think, Rob, we have quite a lot of uh, people who join us at sax school, maybe as brand new beginners or maybe coming back to saxophone, they played back in high school and now they're in their 40s, 50s, they want to get back into playing again. And a lot of those people will go straight in and say, right, I know I'm going to do this and I want to get the best saxophone I can now um, because that's the only one I'm going to have for now for, for years, even though I'm just a starter. And, uh, and I can kind of understand that instead of starting with a cheaper instrument and working your way out. But what I'm hearing you saying that is that even that could be done on a higher basis where you then take some of that higher that you've paid and put it off the purchase price of the saxophone, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, actually, our most popular hire is probably a Yamaha, um, which wouldn't, uh, wouldn't surprise many people, I'm sure. Um, and we, we again, we make that affordable. But what I often say to people is, yeah, if, if you're coming back into it, you've already played before, 85 90% of learning that instrument is reading music, and that will come back fairly quickly. Um, so you go with the Yamaha. Once you've got back, back into your stride, back into your step, Give it six to eight months. Make sure you're still playing. Then use then offset that budget against something else. Yeah. Or stick with the Yamaha. Hey, I've got a Yamaha Alto up there. I've had it for like 30. Actually, goodness me. I got 1987. Rob, how many Yamahas years is that? Yamahas are fantastic. That's a lot yeah. of years, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think I got my they value are, for money out of it. They keep going. They're, they're, they are. They're, they're brilliant instruments. Yeah, they and are. And there brilliant. are obviously others out there. Um but you know they do keep going. But you often find when you go to you know a local pub and you see a get someone playing in the in a band, it'll often be still a student Yamaha. They keep going. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. They're great. They're great saxophones. I mean, that's the that's the pro. It's the sixty two uh, when that they first came out. I guess around that time. And uh, yeah, I just kept using it. I, I see a lot of the pro players who might have their loved mark six at home but then they'll take a working horn out for doing gigs and uh, sometimes you're right though sometimes it is a student a student instrument or a sort of intermediate instrument some of them play great i, I mean it's surprising some of the ones i've had sent me for review uh, they really are amazing so i've got something i wanted to ask you actually i'm curious to know if you've got any interesting stories of uh, customers that have come to you and hiring because i was talking to one of our members the other day and he was telling me that um, he lives in a few different places uh, in the world. So he has a few different saxophones. And I was thinking someone like him would actually make sense to maybe, you know, hire a couple and, uh, and do it that way. So what about you? Have you had some interesting uh, customers who've come to you doing something a bit different? Yeah, we do. Um, we often get you know, bands that are on tour. Um, if they're, they're touring the UK, they will come to us because we don't know what to expect when we put our instruments in a hold. Um, <laughs> will they still come out the right shape? I don't know. Um, so a lot of people will phone us up before and say, look, we're heading to the UK for a couple of months. Can I hire a saxophone or flute, clarinet, etc.?" cetera? Um, and yeah, we, 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 we've done a couple of names. Um, we can't obviously disclose don't tell me. I don't want to have to sign an NDA, <laughs> Rob. <laughs> but um, but yeah, uh, we also we also um, think someone was over for the Grand Prix and they left their saxophone um, back at home and they just wanted to, to have a sax for the weekend so they didn't miss a practice. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. And what about people who are maybe already playing alto and then they want to experiment with a tenor or a soprano or a maybe even a baritone. Do you see that much? Yeah, we get that all the time. I mean, an absolute is the correct way to do it. In fact, we start our tethers at £20 per month. So again, they're really affordable. And it is so that people that have already played the alto, they can have a go at something else, you know, have a go at something deeper and just see whether they like it before they then go in and, and get something better. Uh, again, using that offset uh, yeah. payment that we offer. It's a really common question I see from our adult learner students at SAC school. Yeah. Like so many of them, the first question is, well, should I start alto or tenor or soprano? And uh, and then once they've been playing for a few months, then it's like, well, um, is it okay if I also learn another one of the saxophone family? And he, when we had, um, so we do these weekender events 
every year where we get a bunch of people in. We just did one a, a few weeks back and had 50 people from all around the world who came and joined us. And nearly all those people have got multiple saxophones, like multiple copies of like, I've got three altos or I've got two tenors or whatever, but also, yeah, I've got soprano and also and a tenor and a baritone and they're just so into it. And, and I love the enthusiasm that we see from a lot of our adult members. But, you know, starting out and thinking, oh, I want to learn saxophone. Well, how much does a saxophone cost? Really? And then uh, maybe I'm going to have four of them. Well, that's, you know, that's a lot of money, right? So it's a great idea to start off with hiring. Okay, so we've talked about hiring. Um, and obviously the option is there to buy a new saxophone. But what about buying a used saxophone? I guess that's, that's another option that people could consider if they were looking for an alternative to buying a brand new saxophone. And we spoke a little bit about how saxophones uh, need to be well maintained, but have you got any tips for people for buying used saxophones? Yeah, I, I, the thing is you can always, you think you're getting a bargain. Um, that, and we see it all the time where people find something, that, you know, they bought a saxophone off uh, eBay, Gumtree, Facebook, um, they got a fantastic price for it. but. And then they've taken it to their local music shop and it needs a full overhaul and a service. And actually they've, yeah, in the end that bargains become a bit of a money pit. Um, so I would always say, watch out when you're doing that, do your research, make sure it's correct. Go try it. Um, and take a friend that already can play, uh, and they can try it as well. Hey, real quick, if you're enjoying the podcast and you love learning how to play saxophone better, then be sure to follow this podcast wherever you're listening, just so you don't miss out on all of our amazing future episodes that we're busy working on for you. And hey, if you're feeling extra generous and you've got a spare five seconds in your day, could you go and leave us a five-star review? Honestly, you would be our number one most favorite person if you could do that. It would absolutely make our day. Thanks a bunch. Okay, let's get back to the episode. Am I right, Rob? Did you tell me that your family background is uh, as doing sax repairs, right? Or instrument repairs? Yeah. So my father, um, uh, this is where the whole everything started is um, we used to, well, we still do repair instruments, um, but it is about getting a good quality instrument. I mean, there was a certain point where we refused to work on cheaper models because you can't guarantee your work. Um, and that's basically meaning you can imagine when you bend a piece of metal, every time you bend it and bend it and bend it, it gets weaker and weaker and weaker. So you need a good quality metal to actually get started with. So you'll find that those cheap instruments that you can purchase off the one that begins with A, um, <laughs> you, they're cheap for a reason. Um, yeah. You'll need to go get them set up and seen. And, and that's another thing when you're buying secondhand, go to uh, a respectable shop that may sell um, secondhand instruments and, and get opinions. Um, we actually do a thing called personal shopping where, you know, if you want to come out, come out with other price and say, look, I've got X amount to spend. I'm a beginner, but I don't want to rent. I just want to buy something. We can go ahead and do that research for you and, and get it right. And that's actually um, because, that's a great that's a great service actually, Rob. Because look, there's so much to learn uh, if you are new to saxophone and wanting to go out and find your first instrument. Obviously, you're going to go on Amazon, you're going to go on eBay, you're going to do a Google search, and you're going to get swamped by all these different choices, um, and possibly be tempted by something that's that looks like a, an amazing bargain. But uh, you, you do need advice. Again, it, you know, if it looks too good to be true, it probably is. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It, 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 there, there's sort of benchmark prices to look for, and you know, make sure you don't go for. Um, mm. However, I but, think that one of the really important things to remember about buying a used saxophone is that if you are going through a, a, a maybe someone like you who's already a repairer or a, a big retailer that's got a stock of secondhand instruments that other people have traded in, then you're going to get, you can, you can potentially get a better quality instrument for a lower price than buying a new one. And what you said before about the, the, me, the quality of the metal, um, I think is super important. And one of the reasons why getting a better quality instrument, if you're thinking for longevity is a, is a better option. 
I mean, perfect case in point is that Yamaha we just mentioned a minute ago. I've also got another saxophone over there that I, I did a YouTube thing for uh, a couple of years back where it's an old uh, student model Yamaha. So the 23, I think it was, probably from the 70s. It still plays great and it's just so well made. Uh, and I think, I think back then the older instruments were made better uh, than the newer instruments today. I think the newer instruments today are uh, engineered better but the older ones were made of better material. So if they're well set up and well maintained, they can still be really serviceable. There's a, there's a brand called Amati. Um, I'm not sure. Have you come across Amati? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So they, they were bust, um, but they made some fantastic instruments. They were heavy, um, but they still play and they're still solid. If you get a good one though. And, and I guess yeah. that's, that's where it really comes down to the, uh, the way that they've been maintained, the way they've been set up. And by for anybody who doesn't know, setting up, I mean, you can explain it better than me, I suppose, but it's what you were saying before about pads and corks and all that sort of stuff, all the little fine adjustments, the height of the keys, uh, all that stuff makes a massive difference to how well a saxophone plays. So I guess the the maybe the final point about used saxophones is that if you do buy something that seems like too much of a good uh, deal, then yeah, you just have to be prepared that you will have to invest a little bit of money in a good repairer to get that saxophone up to playing condition. Yeah, again, going back to um, where rental may be a very good option when you're starting out is the fact that you've got that support network. Um, and when you go and buy something secondhand off eBay, Gumtree, Facebook, you don't have that. You know, if you go buy something and then you go, I don't know whether it's me or the saxophone, at least if you're hiring from a, a reputable company, you know it's you. <laughs> Yeah. And you know oh, well, that you're yeah. the one that needs to do the work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know if that's quite the right way to spin it, Rob, if I'm honest with you. But yeah, I get your point. And then, and at the very least, what you can do is pick up the phone and ask yes. the question. Now, and I, yeah. I, I have to say, we see that a lot in Sax School because we've got members all over the world, right? So we'll get an email from someone that says, oh, I was so excited to get the saxophone and I just, I can't get the, um, I can't get the mouthpiece on or... Well, why is it Stick making this whole sound? <laughs> yeah, or well, why can't I get this note out? And you think, well, yeah, yeah, you need to talk to the person who you bought it from because they they just need, yeah, there are certain little things that need to be adjusted for for a saxophone to to work correctly. And it's such a shame if that part of the buying process is missed out. I think that's mm. called customer service. I'm not sure. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we're not perfect. Um, going back on my words there, but um. You know, if we if there's something wrong with any instrument when you're hiring it from us, we very swiftly send you a label, uh, get it back to us, get it turned around as quick as possible. We, yeah, you know, we aim for those uh, five star reviews, and um, yeah. No, I love it. I love it. No, that's uh, you know, I'm always looking for companies like you, Rob, who do uh, look after the customers and and make that process of learning as easy as possible because that's in my mind what it's all about. Oh, that's awesome. Hey, I, I think we've covered some really good stuff here. And I hope for anyone listening that it's been useful if you've considered, uh, you know, maybe you haven't considered, but maybe now you will consider hiring a saxophone or at least looking at a used saxophone instead of just going out and spending all of your money on a very, very expensive new saxophone, at least at the start of the process. Awesome. Hey, I think we've covered loads of stuff here, Rob, and hopefully that's opened your mind. If you're listening and thinking of getting a new saxophone, maybe hiring is something to consider. And I tell you what, on that thought, uh, Rob has very kindly set up a special promo code for our audience where you can get your first month free of Sax Hire. Uh, all the details for that, though, is over on our blog. In fact, if you want to get a refresher for anything that we covered in the episode today, that's all over at saxschoolonline.com slash podcast. Just find this episode and you'll find the details where you can get that one month free of Sax Hire. Awesome. Hey, thanks a bunch, Rob. I really appreciate you spending the time talking to me today. No problem with so Nigel. Space in. Hey, just before we go, if you're curious to know how we're helping thousands of people in sax school every single day and how we can help you to improve your playing, then go grab the 14-day trial that we've got running at the moment. You can find all the details over at saxschoolonline.com. It's free to start for 14 days. You can explore our thousands of lessons, our structured courses, get help from tutors, even attend all of our live stream sessions that are happening all the time. We'd love to help you inside Sax School. Thanks again for listening to the podcast. And don't forget, you can claim that free month of Sax Hire 
by following the link over at the podcast page for this episode. That's over at saxschoolonline.com slash podcast. Keep practicing hard. We'll catch you next time. Thank mm-hmm. you.